<laughs> we're heated. We are heated. We're going to talk about some stuff today. But even in my relationships that if like at the time I felt was like, what the fuck happened? Right. I never like I always was like, what did I do? And if you don't do that, you're some kind of narcissistic fucking crazy person. The only way you are going to overcome that relationship and improve for the next one and become a better person and a better spouse or significant other is literally by reflecting and asking them, hey, what can I work on? If you sit out of, if, I want you to look back and reflect on your relationships. And if you happen to look at them and, and they've ended where like you're the good guy every single time and you're the one who's never done anything wrong and it's always on them, mm -hmm. it's on you, baby doll. Yeah. Or dude, I don't give a fuck who you like. It's on you. You need to. And I've been in those situations. Do a little self reflection. I've been in those situations where I've, you know, you've gotten cheated on and you just like you hate them. It's all sure. their fault. All their fault. But once you get to the other side of that, you go, what? I mean, I kind of was doing this and this, and like, I mean, that wasn't right. But you have to. I mean, again, I have a healthy sense of like crippling insecurity. So like, I'll always be like, what did I do? Correct. What did I do to make him cheat on me? I wasn't fucking good enough, whatever. But if you're the kind of person that when a relationship ends, you never, you always, never. always think that it's the other person. I'm just such a victim. Always. Still. Then you are never looking at yourself. And this whole victim thing that yeah. these guys do of like. That we, speak that we generally see, yeah. which by the way, apparently we have to throw out now that like these are our personal experiences <laughs> from what we have personally experienced yeah. or our girlfriend, which by the way, this is not like we're not saying just because one guy has done this. That all, all guys of have them done are this. like this. Everything that girls we have talk done about. Things, yeah. Doesn't mean all the girls are like that. Like chill the fuck out, bro. Everything we talk about is literally a conversation between two girls about the experiences that we have had exactly. in our lives and how we are uh, relating it to different either stories in the, you know, pop culture or things that have happened to us in our lives or, or people broettes. that us about. Yes. Yeah, broettes that, um, you know, write in mm -hmm. and they are asking us questions. The only answers that we can give are based on our we experiences. Know. So we're never saying all guys do this, all girls do this, all this, all this. Well, we're not let me fucking say this retarded. Too. First of all, if that's what you're hearing, open up your damn ears, number one. Number two, if you are the person that is taking people's generalities and like what they're speaking about as like on you, then guess what? I think that's showing a little bit of insecurity right there. Maybe that's something that you need to work on. Yeah. Right? By the way, or either insecurity. <laughs> Have you noticed that when people do that? Yes. You might just be making a blatant statement and it's about no one. And then all of a sudden someone takes offense to it and you're like, why? Whoa. Why? By the way, that's not insecurity. That's narcissistic because they think that everyone no, well, not even just that but it, but everyone is talking about yes them. That, by the way we're not fucking talking about you we well, don't know that, you. we don't care about you that number one and number two obviously they have some in, internal demons that they need to like work out instead of projecting it on someone else right do you okay. know what i mean it's so, just like is this about me well oh it's not but is this something uh, you are need, you guilty is this something that you need to look at are you guilty yourself yes that you've been ignoring Exactly. Right? So it's both. Yeah, it's both. It's of those. both. So <laughs> what we're talking about is a. And by the way, I want to say first, I love our man fans. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience, I don't know about you, but the all of fucking, them yes. have been pretty fucking rad. They sit, they listen to the podcast, knowing exactly what it is, which yep. is they are eavesdropping on a conversation um, of even. two women about women and about our own experience. So they, I, for the most part, the man fans are not at all no. trying to make this show about them. They're literally trying to learn something, maybe about their girlfriend, maybe about their wife, maybe their sister, whatever, yeah. like how women kind of think. And good and for love, you guys for doing that. And they've taken it in stride too. Like even for a while there, when we talked about The Bachelor for the first three sure. minutes of the podcast, there would even be <laughs> a few like, times hey, where girls. <laughs> they would even be like, man, you guys are killing me with it, but hey, I'm still listening. Hey, I and love it. we okay. appreciate that. Yeah. Because they know it's a female podcast from a female perspective. Yes, and right? we understand that girls get into talking about stuff for guys sometimes we know you shut down it's fine mm -hmm. so we love that you keep the podcast on and wait for those little nuggets of us talking about sucking dick or whatever you're waiting for <laughs> but 
Um, what happened was a man fan, new so na- a, very, a new man fan, yeah. so he's not necessarily in your guys' group, um, wrote in to the broettes and decided to let us know, just let us know about well, he what? was going through stuff. He's going through stuff. It and seems that's what we got from the end. But how it started was that he listened to the episode, um, Once a Cheater, Always a Cheater. Yes. And he had a and huge I, concern. He had a de- – it was a trigger for him. Let's very, say that. He was, it was, yes. He was very triggered by it. He wrote in first with – I don't know what how much you want to read of it, but – I mean, there's literally like 15 there's paragraphs. There's 15 paragraphs. Of just the first – like Which section, by the way, and then there's like 25 paragraphs for the last section. So we had talked about before when guys write in or they write you, and it's happened in my DMs before too, where they're just like, "I'm a nice guy. Why do nice guys always finish last? Like I never understand. I'm so fucking cool, but all these people just shit on me, walk all over me, blah blah blah." But in that exchange, and these girls are breaking up with me out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. But as you respond to them, and if you engage they start to get more and more hostile. Well, you These see their true colors nice really come out. guys, air quote, yeah. so nice, start to get... So nice, in fact, that they literally attack you. Attack you. For responding to them. Not in the right way, though. You well, responded, it, but oh, they didn't like didn't what you said. because I didn't kiss his ass the entire conversation because I didn't tiptoe around his sensitive feelings because he's so fragile. He's fragile right you now. You know what I and mean? he shouldn't have... And if he is... By the way, if you're listening and you know who you are... If you are fragile and you're going through something like, hey, you, we get it. You went through that. You kind of projected some stuff on what we're talking about and tried to make things about things that they weren't. I understand that happening. We just want to let you know that that's what it is that you're going through. And we're sorry that you are like, we're sorry that you had some bad breakup or whatever happened that you are now kind of broken and i think you need to figure some shit out brother i am sorry that whatever you had went through is making you treat us and other people like a fucking like a dick just weird right no he's a he's straight he's, up he was he being was, a dick he was being a dick like let's just be real like you can deal with your own shit and you can like i i i will always feel bad for people who are dealing with relationship problems and absolutely like all this other stuff but the minute you want to project it on someone else fuck you yeah that's not our problem. And stop treating other people like shit because you feel like shit. Right. And so in this case, this guy who's wanted to like, it seemed like at first he kind of wanted to have a conversation, but because I didn't respond, like, and we didn't respond in the manner that he wanted, he just fucking mm-hmm. went off. Yeah. So essentially he was saying, I've never been cheated on, but I have been, she- like, I've never cheated, but I have been, been cheated, cheated on. on. And he is bummed basically that he needs to, you know, make up for proof. all the sins of his kind. And I'm yeah. so sorry. And for all mankind, for, for everyone, by the so, way. Girls fucking cheat, guys cheat. You know, correct. people, it's rampant. It feels like I hear about it all the time. That's what we're talking about, is but we were hearing just cheating, 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 things like uh, relationships yeah. ending, cheating, cheating. You're like, holy shit. Exactly. And by the way, like, that's just one relationship problem. There's so many relationship problems oh, that everyone brings to the table. Do it's you know what I mean? symptom That of, you have to deal with. Yeah. That people have to deal with. Yeah. So essentially he was complaining that he is annoyed that um, he has to continue to keep proving himself to this woman who has been cheated on in the past who has trust issues. Sure. And, you know, even when she's like, hey, can I look at your phone? And he's like, yeah, sure. He's kind of like, I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't really have to show you my phone, though. And I shouldn't have to show you it time and time again after I proved once that I'm, I'm a good listen, guy. And listen, bro, we agree with you. Yeah. By the way, you may, not be in the right posi- you may not be in the right relationship if you have to constantly be showing your girlfriend your phone. We agree with that, right? Yeah, kind of. I, I mean, mean, here's the thing, But at the, the thing, same though. time, you do whatever she I mean, needs it if you're cool with it and you're not have anything to hide show her the fucking phone this is this is i'm gonna come from a personal very personal experience here yeah. so when i after my divorce with my ex-husband i mean i always had trust issues with men right right but i actually really trust it fully my ex-husband yeah and i'm telling you the entire relationship was built upon lie after lie after major fucking lie and the cheating and everything else so of course my trust issues were you know a lot more amplified yeah, in my yeah, yeah. life and not even dealing with that but even dealing with like little fuck boys and dudes in between who are like cheating and stuff like that too, sure right so then when i met my husband now and we were dating and we were doing long distance okay even if he 
was doing everything fucking no, perfect right. and everything fucking right. That's right. I am still human and I still have my insecurities. And out of nowhere, sometimes I'd be like, oh my God, I know he's out with the guys, but is he cheating? Like, I haven't heard from him in a bit. I need to know. And as a woman, yeah. I would overthink and dramatize things and literally let my mind get the best of me. And I had to communicate that to him. I was like, hey, listen, I just want to let you know, I, I, I'm freaking out right now. I don't know why, but I feel like you're ch- you might be cheating or out doing something Can you please wrong. just like put my and, mind at ease? And that's all he would do is put my mind at ease. And even now, even if it wasn't on him or he didn't do anything wrong, that would still happen. And sometimes it would happen more than I would like. And sometimes it would happen less. But at the beginning of a relationship, he had to keep showing me time and time again because to him it was worth it because he was like, listen, I fucking love you. And I am so sorry that you've right been there. scarred in the past. And that's not me. And I will continue to prove day in and day out that that's not me because that I want to be with you and this is what yeah. matters. Which, by the way, there were some instances where I would like get really mad and freak out on him. And he's yeah. like, just calm down and communicate, right? So yeah. I had to do better at that. And I had to sit there and realize I can't just go off on him and do those things. Now, does it happen less and less frequent? Absolutely. Sure. Does it still come up? It does sometimes. Sure. But guess what? Because he loves me and he wants to be with me. And that is part, while it is part of my past, and I'm telling deep rooted past, like fucking five-year-old Tiffany being told by her dad that all men will cheat on you. You better fucking right. watch your back. Right. Do you see what I mean? It right. wasn't just that one past relationship. Mm-hmm. It's everything. So because of that, he was sitting there going in his head. I love this is what I want to deal with. I will work on you with this. Just like he has issues too from his past relationships when it comes to stability. He thinks everyone's going to run out on him, right? Yeah. Kind of like his dad did when he was younger. Just like every girl did when he was fucking deployed. He needs fucking stability, right? And so like he needed that all the time. And I, I couldn't just sit there and be like, well, you know what? Fuck you. I'm gone. Because mm-hmm. at the minute I do that, he'd be like, <gasps> yeah. So I always had to let him know no matter what, even if we were doing, even if we were in the middle of a fight, I had to remind him because he would get scared. I was like, listen, I will never leave you. I'm here. Right. I'm not going to leave your fucking side. And even though that was not on me, because I never did that to him, mm-hmm. I had to choose yeah. to keep doing that for him. And yeah. sadly, while it sucks sometimes, because you sit there and go like, bro, no, I, I know. keep showing you. This has got to get better at some point, which it does. And right? it does, like, but it takes time. It takes time. These so- are wounds that have to be healed. And if you're with someone who's willing to help you with those, fucking, that, that's what you need. Because a we big, all have wounds that have to be healed from the past. Yes. That we and, carry with us. Um, a red flag would be if he was defensive about that. Sure. Like a red flag is if you were just like, hey, I'm sorry. I feel this way, blah, blah, blah. Please just put my my mind at ease. If he's like this guy um, <laughs> where he's like, I don't want to. Why? Why should I? Why do Why I need should to show I? You my fucking phone I didn't again? do anything. I've never done anything. Then you're like, oh really? Well, guess what? You're the first one that's gonna do something. Honestly, that would have that would have that would have been tore it. down our relationship if the few times, like after the one time that I asked him to show me that his reassurance or his assurance, and I was like, hey, do you mind if I just see your phone? And he was like, I already showed you it once. I don't need to show you again. That would prove to me that I couldn't trust him, just like I couldn't trust For guys in the past. Sure, right? It's continuing this trend, and it, what I kind of explained to this guy was that, like, I. I mean, we are, as humans, we sometimes seem a little bit more empathetic towards, like, animals. Yeah. Right? Than we are towards people. But if you think of a dog that's, like, all that dog's really known is being abused, right? Like, it's being hit. Yeah. And that's really kind of all it's used to. The minute someone raises its hand up, even if it's to, like, pet the dog, the dog's going to flinch and think the same thing. Yeah. And the only way that dog's going to know that, like, humans actually aren't all bad and don't all hit and abuse him is if they see constant reassurance over and over again that those new humans are good people and showing them love and yeah. affection and all these things right yeah and it has to be constant like and you'll notice at first a dog is either scared or will bite back because that that's it's fucking survival mode dude yeah, yeah, yeah. right but then it'll let its walls down and eventually it will start to like warm up to the humans and then they fucking get along but they still might have a little bit of that trauma yeah right it's just like maybe later on someone else's family comes in raises a hand it's like the dog freaks out it's okay yeah but but what do they do they beat the shit out of the dog no they don't fucking beat the shit out of the dog it reinforces that right yeah they show it love and they help it eventually it trusts eventually it it does loves and everyone but it has to be consistent and it's the same thing with fucking human beings whether it was a past really one past relationship whether it happens your entire life, which by the way, we don't just carry shit from our past relationships and baggage. We carry shit from fucking childhood, man. Oh yeah. So when you get All the way through. married or when you get into a very serious committed relationship, you both bring like a suitcase with you, you do. right? And 
you open it up and you both try and help the other person like unpack some of the stuff and hopefully you have enough that can just like Mm -hmm. fit into one suitcase (laughs) and you guys are together and like all your clothes are kind of like you know what I mean. All the things are kind of it might not start off put like that right. No, start and it off will with take, like maybe fifteen fucking suitcases. Yeah, and you have to unpack and throw that shit away. And finally, right? you get rid of the clutter, and you will always have some stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm never gonna say that the suitcases completely leave right, mm-hmm. but hopefully you guys both have enough that you've worked on, you've gotten rid of, you've figured out that it fits into one suitcase, and you can keep that in your fucking place and mm-hmm. that shit's gonna come out every once in a while right it will it will never ever leave but and at least you both know you can both look in the bag you both see what's in there correct okay cool we're gonna deal with this this uh-huh. day oh this fights about this today oh this whatever and that's what melding a relationship so it's this work. guy doesn't fucking understand that well shit. the thing is too it's relationships are work and I, we've said it time and time again, but it's fucking true. Let's get it through our, our heads right now. It's not what you see in the movies. It's not this bubbly fucking fake Instagram shit. It is real life. It's work. Okay. And by the way, relationships aren't always going to be 50-50. First of all, in order for a relationship to work, it needs to be people give that one person gives 100 and the other person gives 100. Right? Yeah. Like, but it's not always going to be constant because we're fucking humans and we can't give it all all the fucking time. No. And there's going to be some days where your spouse is giving 99% and you're like, I can barely give one right now, but that's what you got to do. And that yep. might be a month that happens like that. It could be a little bit and it might teeter-totter the other way. Or other times it might be a little bit more right. even. Do you see what I mean? Right. But in this case... You know, as you know, as we're trying to explain to this guy, like, essentially, like, hey, you know, you got to figure out like what you can put up with in relationships. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself that you don't want to keep having to prove yourself to this girl and just show your, you know, her phone every single time, well, then you have to realize that that's don't be with her. Then that's not the relationship. Like, that's not the for baggage. You if you're not willing to work to on work that. on that. Yeah, that right? clearly wasn't worth it to you. Yeah, and, yeah, and, 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 and that's fine, you brother. Know, but that's not our fault. And he's like, cool. That's not my, he, he feels like though, because he didn't create that baggage, he shouldn't have to deal with it. Oh, right. He thinks he has none. Well, that's, <laughs> so that's, how I about mean, you write fucking paragraphs to strangers. And the thing is too, <laughs> he, he's turning, he's turning the situation around too. He's saying, okay, so she asked for my cell phone, right? Sure. I give her my cell phone. He goes, well, what happens now? now I'm mad about he it. He goes, what happens now? If I ask to see her cell phone, well, now I'm fucking controlling. Yeah, and then I'm known as controlling. To, like, that's the thing. Is that your stuff, brother? Like, yeah. you obviously don't need to, so you don't. She needs to, so Correct. she does. I'm sure you have, again, this guy, I know you have you some stuff. You can't do relationships as an eye for fucking eye. Tip the minute for tat, you start it's doing that, work. it's going to fucking explode in your fucking face. And you're going to think to yourself that's going good because you're just, you know, can you imagine if you were like, babe, I'm really having some insecurities right now. And like, I, I feel like really just in, you know, insecure about the cheating thing. Do you mind just really quick guys look through your phone to feel better? And he was like, yeah, sure. Give me your fucking phone. Let me see what you're hiding. Could you imagine if you dealt with that every single time? Every time. You know what I mean? But then he thinks it's fine. And then that's where in relationships too, where she's like, listen, I just can't do this anymore. And he's like, wait, what? I've been perfect to you. I've been such a nice guy. It's out of nowhere. It's like, actually, no, you've been insensitive. You've been a dick. Yeah, you, you've been rubbing my insecurities in my face thinking that you like you've hooked up with a girl that clearly has trust issues that you didn't want to work on. It's not out of fucking nowhere, dude. So again, he also, you know, after we explained the the dog thing and just explained that relationships are work, Get and it, that dude? We, we understand that like it's not fair that people have their shit and bring in sure. relationships. But that's kind of We're part not of saying life. It's fair, but it's then life. Immediately he took offense to like I have a feeling you're taking some of my concepts, like, I have a feeling you're taking some of my comments and you make it seem like I don't understand the concept concept of past relationships and experiences leaving a lasting effect on people and shaping their worldview. I mean, there's no way for me to rebuttal all this without sounding like a complete narcissistic asshole, especially with the whole ASPC animal reference that you guys played up. You're right. <laughs> you're right. There's no way for you to talk like that and not be a fucking dick, dick. <laughs> Just be fucking normal, dude. Uh, Just fucking have a conversation. Like, what so is here's wrong with you? And he goes into it and says, "Also, I'm not going to try to rebuttal for argument's sake, but I'm just tr- and I'm just trying to understand." And then goes into like ten paragraphs of arguing, like, arguing rebut- his point, like, rebuttaling. 
And he said something about how we talk in generalities. Yeah, well, something? let me scroll. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you need to get through, through this all of fucking, that. Uh, Mansplaining. N- novel. Trying and to he figure, did. let us know that what we're doing wrong on our own fucking podcast in our own business, just like a man. So he did say at this one point, sorry if I, and, and by the way, I'm not going to read all this because this is like no, no, literally no. going to take up two read, fucking yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. Sorry if I sound angry or bitter or fragile. I'm just kind of right now. And I guess oh. I shouldn't take it out on you all. If I oh. came off that way, I'm sorry. Oh. Fundamentally, I get it. But on other levels, I just think it's completely unreasonable because there's nothing I can do about it when it's happening to me and I just, it's just, just a helpless feeling. So by the way, this guy's going through struggle. He's struggling. He's struggling, bro. He's like, having problems it, with relationships and you get it. If you're going to ask two women about their opinion on things, you can't fucking attack the hand that's feeding you, man. You reached out to us yeah we didn't fucking you listened you. to our podcast <laughs> you can very easily and we encourage you to stop listening unsubscribe all of these things if you don't like what we're saying yeah. what i was saying to you earlier is like we have opinions about stuff we are two yeah. girls that have opinions we're not going to make everybody happy and we're not here to do so no. so we, you know, I think it's boring to try and make everyone fucking happy. So if you don't like it, like, please, dude, if we pissed you off, if we fucking triggered you, like, stop listening. Like, I get that. We try. I will say one thing. I, I feel like we try to understand d- different people's point of views and stuff sure, like that and go like, oh, OK. Our own. And like, OK, I can try to understand maybe why someone would do that. Sure. But at the same time, we only know what we know. And so, there's going to be some things that we're going to have staunch opinions on and it's not going to fucking waver. And in this Sorry. case, like. It's like, listen, if you if you're going to be in a relationship, you're dealing with fucking baggage and you need to have an honest, serious conversation with yourself about what can you handle and what can you not. And don't sit there and lie to yourself in a relationship the entire time and think to yourself that you can handle what she has. And then later on, make it worse for her. Yeah. Damage more of her. Show her that like a guys aren't willing to work on it. Like, yeah, don't, if you be honest, listen, I lo- I respect you a lot. And, you know, I have to say, for some reason, the whole, like being with someone who's been cheated on and needing that constant reassurance of that trust, like I personally can't do that for you. And that's why I'm being honest with you now so that you can find someone who can before just we be get normal. into this relationship. And just talk. It just fucking turns toxic. Just talk. Be honest. Super simple. Like, I mean, not super simple, but try it. Try it's it. the same thing when you first get in relationships and like you and you start realizing it's starting to go somewhere serious. And then you have that conversation about like kids and religion and marriage and shit like that. Because guess what? Those are like deal breakers. Yeah. Right. So figure it out in the beginning. Figure out the deal breakers in the beginning. And by the way, that's not somebody leaving you for no reason. Again, that's somebody that had issues. You couldn't deal with it. Boom. You're gone. That's not no reason. Yeah. And don't talk to two girls about why we're, we don't trust men. Talk to your fucking bros exactly. about why we don't trust them and yeah. see how many times they've fucked around on their fucking whoever, girlfriend, casual dating, anything. Like, ask your bro friends why girls don't trust us. Mm-hmm. And if Try you also, talking to them about it, not the girls that have been cheated on. If you, Because he did bring that up. That was one thing he didn't bring up in the communication episode that he doesn't think men have communication problems. He thinks women communicate better with other women and men communicate better with other men. That's fair, but I'm saying when you're in, and that's true. He's not wrong. No. But when you are in a relationship that you care about, you have to try and get on the level of the other sex. And it's crazy. I know it's hard. Yeah. That's why we have to keep, why, why everyone's in count, you know, marriage counseling and therapy and all of this, because talking to the other sex is very hard to do. Yeah. But you have to try if you want to. Yeah. I don't know. He even brought, I don't know. He brought up even more shit and then got to the point where at the end he was like, I just feel like you guys speak in generalities a lot, especially when it comes to men and relationships. Don't get me wrong. Plenty of men do it too. It makes, it makes things harder for women when they actually do it. So he just like tried to compare us to men speaking in generalities. I think we're speaking very frankly here. We're, we're actually s- being very specific. Yeah. <laughs> you talk about we your are, ex. I mean, we, we talked that about fucked cheating. with you. That's I talk general. about, yeah, my experience that fucked with me. Yeah. I talk about guy friends that we have. You were in the military. You had a bunch of guy friends. Dude. And you could probably count on all your fingers the amount of them that were cheating on their wives back home. And not that it 
whatever. It was eight, like literally it's everybody. It was like I want to say it was about sixty to eighty percent of my fucking unit, sure. dude, that was doing it, and I saw it constantly. So when that's and all also, I see, and that's all I know. Guess what? That's what I'm going to talk about now. When it comes to my husband and like those guys on like SF teams, yeah, I will say like you know you hear back and forth, but I hear a lot of those guys. And even though I never experienced it, but I hear a lot of those, those guys talking about how their wives cheated on That's them. That's what I was just going to say. And for their fucking both friends. ways. And those guys talk about that often, right? It's both and ways. And to me, that hurts my fucking heart because I'm like, damn, I like know how that feels because I was in that same exactly. situation. Women at home can do it too. They do. Oh, no absolutely. No question. Just because and we they don't do. mention it. Just because I, I mean, obviously I never experienced a woman cheating on me doesn't mean right. that's not happening. So, but yeah, again, he just, you know... I mean, he did try to throw in a few compliments here and there with like, oh, I do appreciate your guys' critique on today's feminism. And like, I, d- I did like the communication episode except for this one. <laughs> All right, brother. So here's the deal. Like, you're going through something. We get it. We uh, triggered you. That's fine. Uh, you triggered us, obviously, too, because, you know. <sighs> I mean, we triggered you. That's fine. Until you decided to come into our DMs. And then, like, just, do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like people, like, people are going to be triggered by shit. And again, you took the first part of it when he was saying, hey, I didn't like this, blah, blah, blah. You explained it. You're like, this is our point of view. He could have left it there. He said something to us. We said something back. Mm -hmm. It sounded very, like, civil. Like, this is how you felt about our, our podcast. We'll absolutely respond to that. But then when you take it past that, to this whole other realm and try and I mean, drag up, us like, into your like subjects yeah like all trying to drag shit. us into your relationship your past relationship your your struggles your fragile and again that's fine but if you're gonna take it out on us he even brought up like communication i'm not gonna do it fathers and children's life five and on like civil rights movement like women on campus like everything just like i just i was like okay but here's the thing all they People nowadays are getting triggered. They get triggered by everything. Everyone's fucking offended by everything nowadays. We're like people tr- I'm wipe, triggered People right wipe now. their fucking ass a certain way, and it's like, oh, my God, I'm triggered. I'm like, triggered. You know what I mean? Here's the thing. People can be triggered all day long. Cool. Congratulations. Like, you got fucking, yeah. <laughs> like, issues. Fine. But why do people have to keep always reacting on it? That's my issue. Like, that's the problem that we're, yeah. we're dealing with, I feel like, in today's society. It's fine all day long to be triggered, to deal with your emotions and the anger and, like, whatever, and have someone just sure. fucking get under your skin. But sure. why do people feel the need to just, like, let it loose on everyone? Deal with your own shit. Stop throwing your garbage out there into the world. We got enough shit to deal with. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, stop. You could be triggered, but stop putting it on other people. Well, get a podcast so you can fucking talk or about do that. it. Like, Shit, I don't care. That's what, I mean, I don't try and put anything on anybody else. I'm like having a conversation mm-hmm. with you well, about like- stuff that's like bothering me, whether we talk about our relationship, whether we talk about whatever. Try this with a therapist or your family yeah. or your friends and not randoms and strangers sure well you know what's so funny too is this the people who are getting triggered or upset by stuff like this and feel the need to like engage you sit there and go like no one's making you sit down and opening up your fucking eardrums and placing our podcasts in your ears just like no one's fucking making you click on my damn profile and look go through my pictures no. to get offended enough to say something fucking rude in a comment like you know what I mean yeah. like no one's making you follow us yeah so goodbye (laughs) yeah like it's basically like goodbye which we probably it probably will be goodbye at this point who knows um which is fine uh too much coffee (laughs) me too um but you know we're gonna we're gonna trigger you but again the ladies i think that are listening can kind of relate to this i'm sure you guys have gotten this this kind of correspondence where a guy just wants to let you know mm-hmm. something yeah. and if you don't respond to them in the way that they want you to oh my god thank you so done. much for bringing this to our attention you're you are so yeah. amazing like oh my god then you please get tell me more about it like you're 20 the best. paragraphs i totally feel how why you you're feel. wrong <laughs> why you're a dumb girl why you don't do things right what he needs to let you know about life it happens all the time even with people that don't have a podcast don't have a platform guys do it all the time that mm-hmm. picture that you have oh, blah, blah, like i didn't really feel like but okay cool 
Thanks. Cool. Well, thanks for playing. Yeah. Um, you blocked. Take your but opinion and shove it up your booty hoe. Right? You know? People are going fucking crazy right Dude, now. Dude, I, like, I, I don't know what it is, but people are driving me insane. People are driving you insane. Just everyone's driving. Like, everyone's going insane. The news is driving me insane right now. It seems like there's Instagram stuff that's <sighs> driving you crazy. Oh, well, that Just was with people. scammers. Yeah, scammers. I mean, like, all of a sudden now, all the scammers are fucking back, man. Like, I literally have every Nigerian, like, pr- prince dude coming and, um, like adding me as a friend and all of a sudden I'm getting not just one DM a day, but it's like five to six DMs a day of like, Hey, there's this fake profile or, Hey, I just got scammed by someone who's faking to be you or like, Hey, I thought I was in love with you for the last year. And it's, I'm well, over. Why it. do they have to let you know that? Because I, I don't know. Like, well, first guess, of all, let me know there's a fake profile and bye bye we like, don't need to it. know. I don't need to know what kind of correspondence you had with the fake profile. I know. Thank you for the, Thank it's you. Like, I don't know why they think that I can do something about it, which, by the way, I'm not even verified on Instagram. So it's not like the, the profile just disappears like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? There so like was for guys- Ross's, Ross had a guy um, like a profile, a fake profile made yeah. of him. Right. And I the reason why I knew this is because I think it wasn't a picture of us in it or something. Mm-hmm. And I was tagged in it. Yeah. And so I kept getting like tagged in the same mm-hmm. picture. I'm like, what the fuck is You're this? Like, what is happening? Well, good thing for Ross is he's verified. So all you can do is you go in and say that it's um, this isn't me faking like the profile is pretending to be someone else and you you can put in his name and it comes up as ross patterson right and boom yeah but for me it's like i'm a fucking nobody so you put it in there and it's like i someone i know and that's it and I'll, sometimes oh, okay. they'll say let the person know or other times it'll say okay oh, thanks oh. for letting us know so sometimes Got it doesn't it. do it right but, but these people like send them to me i don't know what they want me to do s- there was some that was sending it to me and they're like do you know Tiffany, can you get a hold of her? I have to talk to her about something. And I'm just like, um, no. Yeah, everyone wants to talk. Um, no, you can let me know what it is and I'll whatever. <laughs> like, what? Uh, and the picture was very <clears throat> suspect. Yeah. Um, and so this is <sighs> and he was just like, I just need to let her know something. Blah, blah. Is this her? And it's just like, OK, well, thank you. I was like, thanks. I'll let her know there's a fake profile. You don't need to get in touch with her. You don't need to talk to her about it. You don't need to have some big fucking conversation about correspondence no. that you had with it. That is not part of it. It seems like you're now using the fake profile to try and talk to her. Mm-hmm. And yes. And that's and so hey, here's, I just want to let you know. I know <laughs> this is where my frustration like, at first I felt bad for these people. And then I realized like. It's called survival of the fucking fittest. And if you want to be an idiot and believe someone that has broken English and pictures worth watermarks all over them or like literally their faces get are smart. like cut out. Get smart. Get fucking smart. Who never video chat you, who never FaceTime you, never do any of this. And then you're going to s- still fall in love with them and then give them money. Like you fucking got what was coming to you, man. It is survival of the fittest. I mean, Catfish is still a show that has episodes How? coming How? out. That's crazy! Like new episodes of Catfish <laughs> are coming out. Crazy. It's like, hey, and it's still the same conversation. Hey, have you ever FaceTime? No, no, they don't have a good connection, and their their screen is always like black, and I still haven't. But I sent some money. What? Because people are so desperate. I know. To like, it's by sad. the way, our sad to fall interhuman in communication to now has gotten so lazy that people don't even want to go out anymore to meet people. They only want to do it lazily from their like convenient home and have it be love. online. Have it be true love. And like create, which by the way, creating a connection just online is very hard. Like I did start to date a guy who was deployed and I kind of knew him a little bit beforehand, but like I, we haven't talked in like years. So yeah. I didn't know who he was. And we created this, co- we create this relationship via the internet Mm -hmm. uh we did try to facetime when he could but it wasn't as often and he was rico suave via text he said everything perfect he fucking smooth blush my pants like he was amazing the minute we got in person i was like oh who are you lady boner like no longer because uh, because he couldn't because he didn't know how to communicate the way he went through text yeah he had all the time in the world to think about what he's Mm going to say he stuck his foot in his mouth all the time in person you get really bold when you're behind the screen that's why sexting very different so great because in person they don't say shit like that (laughs) no do you know what I mean? So you could be like oh okay and that's what I mean there was all these things that he said he was gonna do to me and then when we Uh got uh-huh like when we, if we ever did get to that, well, we did barely. I had to stop them. But you know, to that point, it was like, 
Mm-hmm. What is this? So you guys should have been in two different rooms, sexting back and forth, and masturbating. Then- <laughs> that would have been like better Literally, than our relationship was fucking love is blind kind of you yeah. know and and that's why that could work but that was very short-lived yeah you and had by the like way, a full on that wasn't like fucking texting no, no they were still talking. talking yeah that's true which is very different still. that's true if it's um, all on text communication or i had a whole relationship with someone over text from beginning middle to end it was only like a couple weeks but yeah. from like meeting over text I mean. my friend gave me your number blah 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 having conversation t- talking about when we're gonna meet blah, blah 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 him getting annoyed us breaking up all oh, over text really like, yeah because you're just like yeah I-, I don't know people are just how many quarantine people probably did that you know 100 I mean? percent. so like had full relationships where they never even never saw the person no nope. Or if they did, they it was just uh, it could have been like an awkward dinner video chat, sure, or a Zoom type of thing, thing, and you're just like, uh, no. Which, by the way, there's no reason, even as deployed members overseas in some of the most like, you know, austere areas. Guess what? We got fucking internet people. Like you can still FaceTime all day long. Yeah, don't, don't believe that fucking don't harsh believe shit. that. Like, are you kidding? Someone can always contact you if they contact want. contact you at least the call even on cat catfish you've never talked to him on the phone no they're always so busy and our times never match up d- never? And it's years of their life and i you know what i think it is i think it's so many times people are so scared to like get into something real that this makes them feel good for the yeah. time. it gives them they the have someone fuzzies, they have something and it's comfortable I know. but it's not you know I super know. uncomfortable yet it's weird to me there is a never sadness to it. it for sure there's a sadness and desperation because mm-hmm. if they aren't desperate or just longing for human connection Correct. they their logical brain would take over Correct. and be like why can this person not fucking talk to me right. that's crazy in 2020 why have they disappeared for two months and then came back into my life or why you know what i mean yeah why is their facebook so fucking weird like we all know what a fake facebook looks like now like you come on i think we do we should right that's why i don't get maybe it's maybe it's not widely known that like hey if there's a picture of a sunset and they have two friends do you know what i mean like i don't know there's certain things that dude i've been sent pictures before and this is the reason. So I had a larger profile page, right? Yeah. And I didn't have any um, watermarks on it. And basically, so many people stole, like, my pictures off that page. And so many, like, scammer profiles were following me that it was going to take me probably months to try to get rid of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I started a whole new profile and made that private. I might go back to private again. Who fucking knows? But yeah. um, it got to the point to where they were like trying to contact my sister. They were stealing my sister's pictures from her Facebook page. Um, my mom got really fucking weird phone calls from people who bo- spoke broken English and weird yeah, texts yeah. asking Dang. if it was Tiffany Hart. And I was not okay with that. And then my cousin um, was getting hit up by a guy who was super concerned thinking that I was in the hospital because we were supposed to get married in a week. And my face was so shittily superimposed on a fucking chicken, like fucking cast in a bed, like a hospital bed. And my Shut cousin was laughing up. at it. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Now, I also had to like inform. I my don't co- have that kind of stuff. I also had to inform my cousin because she kept saying like the guy was like sending her information about me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That had like my birth date and stuff on it. And she was like, oh, that's not her birth date. And I'm like, don't. Yeah. I was like, don't even give any more information about me. People need to know if that's For it sure. or not. Don't say like, please don't anything. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. You can trust them. Yeah, yeah. But it was weird that I had to like, what am I supposed but to do? Bring all my fucking do. cousins into a room and pray brief them? Like, hey, you might. No. Yeah. So I had to take matters into my own hands. And I think that it went away for a bit, which was like a breath of fresh air because I literally did everything. Like started a brand new fucking profile. Yeah. Put it on private. Watermarked every goddamn picture. Deleted anyone that could possibly be a fake profile. And now it's coming back and it's like, what the yeah it's annoying yeah because there's only so much i can do i think it's just like at this point part of i mean i'm sure uh people deal with it at I could like such a higher imagine. level so it's like i like, think it's just imagine. part of it and playing whack-a-mole with it i yeah. don't think is gonna be the thing i think you just have to be like okay, okay. like yeah they're out there people are either gonna fucking know or they're not like there's people that are like tech savvy Uh, social media savvy like no 100 percent what a real profile looks like and what it doesn't so if they're really gonna find you they're gonna look through and find the one that's really you right well and that well yeah you would think so and that's the thing too you would think if they don't then fine 
<laughs> that's survival <laughs> you know what I mean? like that's the that's the thing too is some of these most of these people are um like 50 60 year old men right and maybe like, they don't know. that are like yeah maybe even 70 that are super fucking retired like yeah. let themselves go and part of me is kind of like offended like did you right did you really think that you had a chance but like the real? desperation like and the need for, but like, for i know real, like are you kidding know, like you know it's like part- catfish though are you kidding did you really think that guy who can't ever talk to you and can't ever like who looks like a goddamn model but it's just like your mind does who, crazy things when yeah. you are again desperate when you don't have any human connection when yeah. you're not like i mean yeah. in the world maybe you're a recluse i don't fucking know but like I and I'm not think, trying to toot my own horn here. Like, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm not sitting there saying, like, you don't look at me and, like, oh, it's like, she's pretty ugly. Like, I'm pretty average. Like, okay, she's pretty. Okay. Like, right. she's a pretty girl. You know right. what I mean? So part of me is just kind of like, we got, like, 30 to 40 years difference between us. Yeah. And if you, you know, ain't rich, it ain't happening. <laughs> <you know? laughs> now, listen. Well, if you, you showed, got that money. Wait if a you second. showed the Wait, fake co- account. Come with my DMs. Yeah. Where you yeah. Okay. Now, look. There's no such thing as ugly and old. There's just <laughs> poor. So if I'm joking, True. I'm joking. But but are we? You never know. There may be a fucking girl that's like, okay, I have no <laughs> idea. But I, don't know. I mean, point being, Dude. look, buddy. Again, we had to, we got a little heated. We got a little triggered. It's called tough love. Sorry, Deal it's called it. tough love. You know, we love you. We know you're going through something, but like, hey, just don't come at us like that. Don't come at girls like that. Don't take like at that. anyone like that. If you're having That's a conversation fair. with a if with anyone, just like take yes for an answer. We responded. We heard you. It would have been left at that. Yeah. And you kept fucking going. Um, just like our sponsors. Woo-hoo! Woohoo! We actually have a new one in the mix that I love. Mm-hmm. Um. First up, we have ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Yes, it is drinking bros. Tiffany, you got your new ghost bed. You christened it immediately. Love to hear it. Yep. Nice and cooling in these 90 it, degree days and nights. I'm sure is. you're excited about it. Well, wonderful. you're excited for Chris because he's sweaty, right? Yeah, but he's As not even here I. anymore. So, Oh, well. Yeah, now he's out of town just- for two. I'm so I'm enjoying the whole bed. Is it so nice? It is. It's so cool to touch. I have not woken up hot at all. Actually, I went to bed last night cold. Right. And it was nice because I felt like I slept better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ghostbed is doing 25% off everything and 30% off a bundle package. It is every human in my house sleeps on a ghost bed. And I think I'm even going to get a couple more. Uh, everyone in the company is now sleeping on ghost beds and we love it. The company is awesome, easy to deal with, fast deliveries, and just all around awesome bed. Oh, Do yeah. it right. Next up, we have StrikeForceEnergy.com. Um, have you had Strike Force lately? Does, Does it sound like it? Does it sound <laughs> no, we had coffee today, right? <laughs> yeah, we did. But today. now, like, it is getting a little bit late. I should probably be popping some Strike Force instead of some coffee. You know what sucks? Coffee. <laughs> uh, so Chris and I were going to go to the gym right before he left. And this is a gym I have a membership to, and he does not. We pop some Strike Force. I put it in my gallon water, right? Yeah. They just had, like, a little bit left in there, drinking it right before we went. They were going to charge him fucking $25 to use a gym for, like, an hour. Oh, and shit. I was like, no way. So we went next door to a Mexican restaurant, and I was all hopped up on Strike Force, just eating my fucking face off. $25? <laughs> Spending on fucking margaritas and tacos. Absolutely. The Strike Force help, helped me probably Strike. more than I need to, and it was great. <laughs> yeah, and it helps you get through the day, yep. drink through the day, work out through the day. Um, through the Strike night. Force will get you through. Go to strikeforceenergy.com, enter promo code LADYBONER, get 20% off. Re-up, get on a monthly subscription so you never run out. I actually need to deliver to my neighbor. She uh, runs out. I'm like, come on, really? dude. I'm like, Just get on the, the monthly. Pump. Give her the pump. I know she I needs should. The pump. Yeah. I should. Next up, we have a new one. Um, this this company I actually have had for like four months before we got this sponsor. I actually reached out to them. Uh, Noom. Mm -hmm. So Noom is an app that helps you with your health goals. It's not a workout app. It's not a diet app. 
it is literally just a, a an app that helps you log your food track your exercise and is very forgiving and realistic about goals that you're setting mm-hmm. so you do like weigh-ins um i don't know if you've ever logged your food on an app before yes it's hard sometimes to find exactly what you had like literally it, whatever yes. you put in like it could be like a random southwest burrito from freaking wherever and they it will have it so their log is really really extensive and has the exact calories and then lets you know what like how many calories you have left for the day that's so great for accountability and it looking is. back on it. But it's very, it's not, I, want, I don't want to say it's gentle, but like it's very forgiving where they're just like, this is what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. You know, you log on, you do your way in, you do what you had for breakfast, whatever. Yeah. And then there's different articles about why we do the things we do, right? Why we eat certain things in certain times of day and how you can kind of Smart. shift that in real realistic ways so, so education too yes so, which it's is not very crash dieting stuff they're never going to be like oh you want to lose 20 pounds in a week here's how you do it it will literally say that's not how we do it yeah. if you put that in right so you put in the goal and stuff um i fucking love it uh sorry to say fuck during the uh sponsor <laughs> noom but i just she love had to it. emphasize I, it um i am eight pounds down from when i first started the app nice. and you know it fluctuates a lot but yeah. like as of today and the last goal that I put in um and it's very like ce- celebratory yeah. about it and it's like hell yeah tell your friends share your whatever like that's it's so just awesome. a really good long-term um app to use if you're trying to just like change habits like mm-hmm. little habits throughout the day whatever Anyways, go to noom.com slash BTE to sign up for a free uh, trial today. Again, I've had it. I had it way before we did this. I love it. I think it's the best. Mm, It's something that you can like fall off of and go back to Mm -hmm. very easily. They won't give you any shit. Yeah, they won't give you any shit about it. It won't be like, where were you? Where have you been? Like, you text with real trainers, with real nutritionists. It's really fucking great. Go to noom.com slash BTE to start your free trial today. You will not be disappointed, I promise. Next up, we have Daily Harvest. Um... So right now, it's really hard to eat, right? It is. Right? How like even, are you doing? It's yeah, great. It's fucking hard right now, dude. I don't uh, know. I've been making, like, I need to go ahead and just to get, get the Daily Harvest shakes because I've been trying to make my own and they don't even taste remotely the no, same. And they're not as easy. Because it's really easy to do on the go. And I just only grab what I have. And, you know, that's where it's so convenient because you're sitting there going, I'm getting all these fruits and vegetables, yes. all these healthy grains in one drink. Yes. And it tastes delicious. Yes. And all you had to do was literally just put water into water into the cup with it and blend it up. Yeah, you can use water, almond milk, coconut milk, real milk, whatever you're feeling. Yeah. Um, if you stocked your fridge with the amount of, like, fruits, vegetables, um, you know, ginger cayenne all these things that are in there you would have a complete full fridge but they condense it into these little smoothies flatbreads bowls it's all plant-based um by the way too it's all frozen right so it yeah, stays fresh at the peak of freshness how so many it's times all super fresh have you gotten fruits and vegetables shoved them in your fridge just to take them out when they were molded and mushed up and then just yeah. replace them with new stuff or i do that all the time fr- or you froze them at a little bit of the wrong time so if you freeze them like freeze right like. before they're ripe they freeze at that ripeness. you know what i'm saying yeah. so they freeze it like right when it's exactly where it needs to be um it's all there's no added sugar, artificial ingredients. They work directly with farms. It's like organic fruits. It's all really good. If you are like me wanting to get on a little bit of a kick, get out of quarantine with a little bit of a, like a good healthy boost, a little you know? healthier boost than yeah. coming out of quarantine pale and fat and unhealthy, which is what I would have come out of a uh, quarantine like, but daily harvest has really been helping me. And even if I just replace a couple meals where it's like a smoothie in the in the morning b- instead of breakfast or a smoothie at night instead of like a dessert i say it i really do does help. snacks and stuff. yeah like exactly. it's great instead of reaching for yes and like it's legit all right there and candy. super easy and if you're gonna make your own smoothies i promise you do it for like three days and then you're over it and I, all the stuff goes bad and you're just like fucking forget it yeah 
Go to dailyharvest.com, enter promo code BROETS to get $25 off your first box, which is a huge savings. Dailyharvest.com, enter promo code BROETS. Try it out. Get on a kick. Lose some water weight pretty quickly. Tell me what you think. Thank you, Daily Harvest. Yeah. All right. Now, we got a little heated in the beginning. Let's bring it on down. Well. <laughs> oh, are we getting heated again? No. I'm down. Let's do it. But. <laughs> Who are we going to fucking go after now? <laughs> um, I want to bring up what we talk about all the time. Okay. Let's do Our it. continually, you know, consideration of OnlyFans. And I think I made Whoa. a final decision. Okay, is it a yes? Let's do it. No, it's a totally no. Oh, definite no. I thought we were going to do it. So, <laughs> it's a I definite totally no. found out some new information. Oh my gosh, tell me. And I'm just not okay with it. Okay. And I think that anyone would be like, well, duh, that would happen. So, when you're on, like, an OnlyFans, or if you're on, like, a certain platform, you know how, like, you feel as if you, like, look into it and go, like, hey, can people steal these? And if they do, oh, the screen turns black. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, you, yes, you and, like, OnlyFans can sue them and, like, all this other stuff. Well, I have a feeling that uh, they're, like, people's pictures are leaked way more than they can even try to comprehend yeah. and keep up with. Yeah. And so, for example, one of the people... Their photos is like their photos are all leaked in a fucking forum, and like it was only a matter of time though, right? And all that like, and you read this forum by the way, so it really hits when you kind of when the person you kind of know them or yes. like affiliate it in a way, uh -huh. and you're like, damn. And you know, some of the guys are like, oh, this fucking slut and blah 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 blah. But then you read all the comments, and it's like, do you have ones of her pussy? Let me fucking. Let me see you have any more of her nipples. Yeah, like, yeah, all yeah. this other stuff. Does she show any more? And it's like, ew, ew, ew. And you yeah. see the way guys are actually really talking about this and asking, like, by the way, they're all, like, trying to get more. And, you yeah. know what I mean? Even though they're yeah. talking bad about her, they're all trying to get fucking more mm -hmm. pictures, which is, like, hilarious to me because it's very contradicting. Are they getting it? There's, well, the thing is, I guess this girl keeps everything covered except for her tits. Okay. So you see her, you know, but still to me, like I would sit there in my head because I, I still, me personally, if I would ever to do it, I would not show my nipples. I would, everything would be suggestive. Yeah. Yeah. But still the way I see like these guys talking and reacting, that makes me feel gross. And I know that if my husband saw anything like that, can you like, even in the military community, guarantee he would be sent a link or a URL or something immediately and be like, isn't this your wife? And he would see all these guys talking mm -hmm. about me. And that would just bring dissension and it'd make me feel disgusting and make him feel like he wants to fucking kill all of them. And I saw it, like the reality of it, right? Because what you see with a lot of times when people talk about OnlyFans is like the, the money, money, the money. It's no like, big deal. Nobody can screenshot. You're protected. Yeah, you're protected. You too. You're and never all stuff, protected. You, talk to Chris D'Elia about being protected. I feel, right? I feel like you when you get down to the nitty, nitty gritty of it, it's like hard no. Like to me, it's like a hard fucking no. Like yeah. don't get me wrong. The money, like men have been sexual. Over and if someone men, doesn't have a husband and they don't care, like, go ahead, girl. Oh, sure. like, That's what I'm saying. But I'm yeah, saying me personally. For sure. For men us. have been sexualizing and over-sexualizing women for the longest fucking time. Good for fucking women to fucking bank on it and to take advantage of it. Good for fucking sure. you. You do what you want. If men are willing to pay that shit, like, that's on. Like For sure. You make it. But for me, personally, I was just like, oh, I couldn't. That just hits way too close to home now. You know? And yeah. I feel like, to me, it just ends that, like, even with all the perks, even if I'm making like, uh, even so millions of dollars a year, I think even if I sat there with Chris, right? Cause him and a couple of his buddies will have drunk conversations sometimes like, okay, dude. So like, would you be cool how, with it? No. How much money for you to like, maybe suck a dick. Right. Yeah. Or like they have, yeah, these, guys yeah, have yeah, these stupid yeah. conversations. Like how much would you kiss a dude? Would you French kiss a dude for a million dollars? Yeah. Like, yeah, I would. And I'd be living on a fucking yacht. Like, exactly. You know? So I have a feeling that if Chris and I had a conversation and I was like, babe, what if I was to get like $2 million for this? I still feel like you'd be like, no, I'm good. Yeah. You know, like him personally, like yeah. depending on what, it, I still think he would be like, I I'm, I love you. You're mine. Like, I think Ross would be cool with it. 2 million. <laughs> I think he'd be cool with it. 
you know and we I mean? just have the conversation but then that's very I indecent think that's very indecent proposal right like that movie where you're like yeah okay we're gonna do this it's gonna mean nothing it's not gonna be a big deal and then the reality of it would be a, a lot different sure well that's what i'm saying but then Until you'd be you on a yacht and you wouldn't it. really have to worry about it until you go back to reality and you yeah, see true. like your tits like all over everywhere. Like, can you imagine? Yeah. You know? Um, but to me personally, I was just kind of like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good there. Okay. So we've decided for now. Yeah. Until we hear another story about how much. Wait, am I deciding making. for you? Um, no, I mean, I. So I've always been kind of like, dude, I don't know if I can. Yeah. But also I'm like. If you want to convince me, I'll think of, you know oh, what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll, I want to hear like the whole layout of it because I don't know anything, you know, like I don't know anything about it. The only thing I know is all sexualized stuff. So when you yes. say like, oh, you just need to talk to them or you just take pictures of your feet or you just do this and this. I'm like, oh, well, yep. But then I True. always say it's a slippery slope. So it's like, yeah, if it was just feet. Sure. Yeah. But it doesn't always. It's not always just feet. Yeah. It's never just feet, is it? That's a great title for the show. It's but never no. always just feet. It's yeah. never just feet. It starts with the feet and then it goes starts up from with there. Feet. <laughs> starts with feet. And then once they get you to post the feet, then they want some ankle. And then they want calf. Yeah. And then they go all the way up. Yeah. Right? It's called grooming. But anyway, um, so, I think it's a no. Yeah. I mean, I just saw like when I saw that, cause even though I wouldn't See, I didn't be know. showing everything, I would still like, that wasn't really what disgusted me as much, even though I was like, it was the guys nudes. talking about it because you know, that's what they're talking about. Well, yeah. So the thing is too, uh, back in the day, I guess the Marine Corps, I don't know. I think it was the Marine Corps. They like every Marine, not every Marine Corps guy, but a lot of Marine Corps dudes like came together and they all sent in like nude pictures of their fucking ex-girlfriends. You know what I mean? Like yeah. videos of giving BJ, like personalized porn, whatever. Yeah. Like, I mean, this, that's f- so fucked up to me. If you're in a relationship with someone, you send them shit. That should never go anywhere. Right. But, but I mean, you know what I mean? You have it to should. S- it should it not. It shouldn't. But in this day and age, you have to kind of suspect that. This was, this was like five that, years ago. But still. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it was one of those things where I was like, damn. And so, you know, people... People deal with that and like have seen themselves on there. And I would fucking, man, I would be so just like, I would just be like, I couldn't. Yeah. And even that instant, right? And yeah. then now to know that I'm personally putting it out there, yeah. like that whole situation would scar me. Then to think to myself that if that situation would scar me, why would I personally want to put that out there for people to pay for then? Yeah. To then, to, for that just to be used to everyone and people just paying for it now. Right. So I just think of that situation and like I'm, I was never okay with any of that stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I can't even, I don't even have time to go on Instagram. So like I can't be doing an OnlyFans <laughs> anyways. What do I need to talk to people? People be like, hello, I paid you five grand for a message and you haven't been <laughs> on in fucking 20 years. Could like you know that? Yeah. I could not do it. Even if I thought like one week, like tried to do it after yeah. that, I'd be like, Dude, I'm busy. It is a lot of I'm upkeep. busy. Yeah. I actually, so the lady who just did my hair, I was talking to her about OnlyFans, and I was telling her what it really truly is, an extension of social media platform. Yeah. And she was like, oh, maybe I'll put some hair videos on it. I was like, well, hold on. Before Calm you down. do, I want to let you know <laughs> what it's kind of known for now. What because they're going to start asking you for? Yeah. yeah. And she was like, I was wondering that when you first mentioned it. And I was like, yeah. yeah. Because she did download TikTok. And did a hair tutorial on mine. Oh, nice. Because she was like, oh, I'll try anything new. Yeah, yeah. She's so sick of Facebook right now that yeah. she's looking for the next new thing. Oh, Facebook? I is guess. that still around? Right? Just what the kidding. fuck is Facebook? Just kidding. <laughs> um, that's where a lot of our broettes are. Well, just, yeah, it's just th- hard for me. Facebook is a little hard for me. The only I thing I can say. keep up with Facebook now is some of the private groups since I'm following yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, by the way... Uh, do you remember that shaving, that magic shaving cream that yes. I told you about? One of the girls, uh, listeners tried it out and she fucking loved it. Right? Yeah. And I saw you sent me a TikTok on it or someone else sent me a TikTok on it. Yeah, probably. Is that where you saw it first? Yeah. Okay. And so I, let me just throw this out there. You guys heard that. So the cream that it was, they have two different creams. They have a, it's like already in a squeeze tube, oh. right? It's a squeeze tube in a cream. And once, what about the powder let one? Let me tell you about that here in a second. 
Yeah. I had someone try that one. Is oh, that that's fucked up. Okay, hold on. Just no, just wait. So you just text her now then. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so the cream, like it works good because it doesn't have any bad smell to it. It doesn't it didn't tingle or anything. They had one for a bald head and one for the bearded face. So those work perfectly in all the bits. Now I will say this. I got the powder. Um over the weekend because I was super hairy and I was gonna be in shorts yeah and I was like cool and that's all they had was the powder okay and that was the first video that I saw so I was like fuck it let's get the powder mm-hmm. the powder was for beards now the problem is you have to like mix it up now yeah which the you know the creams are a pre-mixed up totally fine not that lazy I mixed it up dude the smell was god awful the smells bad but it doesn't burn or do anything right no but okay, listen okay. no the smell was so bad that I was just like damn like this is really fucking bad like, I don't know what Nair smells like, but this smelled like rotten, like rotten, rotten, rotten Nair's eggs. Nair's pretty bad. Oh. And I was really shocked by it, right? It worked fabulously. No burning, no nothing. Worked just as well as the cream. Now, however, Chris came home. I didn't realize this, but the entire house smelled like it. Oh, shit. For I like to text her now. The rest of the day, like... 20? So it's just the pre-made cream that's the good one? Yeah, that's, that, okay. that, that doesn't smell. I'm telling you, our laundry room, like every room in our house, including the room that had all like the fucking clothes in it, which I was like, please don't let the clothes smell like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Smelt like the worst rotten eggs. We had the doors open all day with fans in them. We had every vent on in the house. Why it's, would they make a product like that? still stunk at the end of the day. And I think we were just got used to it because we were in, you know, because we were in the stank. So that's the only PSA I'll throw out there is okay. if you get the powder, it smells so pre-made. fucking bad. Get the pre-made. Like, get I'm sure the if you pre-mixed. Have a little, yeah, get the pre. Yeah, get the cream and the tube. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was just because of her house and the way it's like built and how open it is, but if you have a little apartment, I'm sure it won't bother you as much if you're used to the smell. Uh, but like Chris came home and was like, Ugh, what, what is really? That? Yeah. And I was like, is it really that bad? Because I was so immune to it already, to the stank. Yep. The dogs were like pawing at their face. <laughs> oh my God. I, ha- I have to. I feel like I have to text her right now. <laughs> you told her to. Well, because I was like, oh, it's the powder. It's like there was a beard one. Yeah. And a sensitive or an extra whatever. So I like a like- gold or a red one, something like that. And um, it was a powder that you like mix. Yeah. Like- and I feel like the powdered one that I saw on TikTok first, they did not explain in depth how bad the smell was. No. She was like, oh, it smells a little. Smells a little weird, but works great, right? Like, it wasn't like, holy shit. The like, cream was just even more convenient, in all honesty. Yeah. Like, it was just easier. You just, like, slap it in your hand and put it on. Where the totally. cr- Like, where the other stuff was like, oh, God, I'm mixing it. You got to get the right consistency. And then by the time you do it, dries too quick. And you're like, what the fuck? And then yeah, it smells yeah, like yeah. booty hole. Like, dirty, dirty, dirty booty hole. Oh, that's not good. I know. Like, didn't wipe your ass in a fucking year booty hole. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's going to have a quite, quite a good surprise. Later She's gonna on. kill me. Um, so we don't have a broette of the week. No, but we're trying to just do one a week. And by the way, you guys submit them all day long. Yeah, submit yeah, Because yeah. we and need we'll more. Definitely read them. Um, we want to shout them out. So we got a little note in our PO box, which is PO box three seven nine three, Wilmington, North Carolina two eight four zero six. If you want to send anything to us, so this is from Crystal. Silvis? That sounds familiar. Silvis? Silvis, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So first she put in a noun. I don't know if she made it up, but it's called a glow getter. Oh, and I like it's it. a driven, busy gal who strives to achieve her goals in life while attaining a beautiful glow both inside and out. Aww. I love it. It's I like, like a glow getter. I know. I love a glow getter. Yeah. She made us these lady boner stickers. <laughs> that's a full on penis, bro. Full I love on. it. Hey, that's a lady boner yeah, right there. What a pretty boner. So she says, ladies, thank you for being so real with us listeners and being the light of my weeks, all of our weeks, by Aww. bringing the dirt to the table. Since I've started listening to the podcast, I've grown to love myself and bring out big tit energy out of myself while still being badass like you two beautiful ladies. P.S. I like adding special touches. Love always, Crystal Silvis, which this is a broette situation where she's like since listening to you guys i've learned to love myself more that makes me that's everything yeah right actually even when she was saying that part of me in my head i was like maybe we need to do that more (laughs) yeah like (laughs) just remind how people how like women you know not to put up with shit how amazing they are what they deserve love yourself and bring that big tit energy i think she 
is. Fucking love that. She's yeah. sending us cool ass fucking stickers. I mean, that's a cool chick she right wrote, there. She made and that look, card by hand, by the, the card, way. Tiffers I think and Jables, like girl we're hanging you're fucking up. cool thank behind you so you. much yeah, yeah we each need our lady boner behind us i put it on my motherfucking car you yes. i'm not even kidding i'm putting it on my fucking car dude in the back and i want Her. everyone who drives <laughs> behind me to see a big old fucking lady boner and it'll just be like if you know you know and they're gonna if be like you know, oh there's you know. tippers with a lady there penis on her car <laughs> i guess you're a broettes listener <laughs> We need to. Well, yeah. we do have stickers coming, so you yes. could use that for that. Yes, so. but these are ours. So Those sorry are ours. you yeah. guys can't Those are have ours. these. But um, I just thought that was Crystal, really cool. Crystal, that's awesome. That yeah. was really fucking sweet of you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, did you send out those? Uh, I'm trying to get people, so I got one. Have they gotten back to you? Yeah, one person okay. got back to me about uh, addresses, so you guys still check um, on the address. Like, we... Here, I'll get onto the podcast page right now but basically we go into the reviews and we have any merch dropping we want to make sure to get it to out to some of you guys early yeah that write us um cool reviews which by the way rating reviewing and subscribing really helps our podcast as well as checking out our sponsors just giving them a little look-see they uh keep the lights on because they believe in us so if you guys could just give them a chance and by the way we like every every sponsor that we have and we have Absolutely. it and we use it so yeah we're not giving you selling you any stuff we don't like so for reviews lpr 8501 hit us up <laughs> uh i think cra hit us up already okay and then reynolds krm you guys like get sticker packs coming towards your way lady boner big tit energy our lovely faces Oh, and the I Drinking Barrettes logo. And if anything, so I'll, I think I'm just going to release those tomorrow with everything. Yeah. And uh, those Love will be it. headed your way. And then we're going to be doing some hats. we got some good idea for hats. Ooh, yeah. Dad hats. Mm -hmm. And if you're seeing us in person, we are oh. almost glowed up. Almost. We're almost all glowed up. I'm sure we both have a couple more things to do. Yeah. But, but uh, we're almost we're getting there. there. We're getting We're getting there. We're getting That's there. why we're in person today, because before it was not a pretty sight. Yeah. So we stayed off the, uh, <laughs> we stayed <laughs> out of the camera. No, but it worked joking. well, because I was like, Wednesday, let me come in. Me My too. hair will be done. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm glad you're here, and I'll see you next week, girl. See ya. Bye. Bye. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plot. Let's move on, every girl I'm moving on Yeah, don't y'all, better things to do Yeah, go buy some fucking shoes